Hi everyone, I'm so excited for today's video. I plan to go out in the shop and redo a piece of furniture. And in case you're new here, welcome. My name's Mary and here on YouTube, I like to share the many projects I have going on around here with you all. Join me as I work on this project and enjoy. About six months ago, I picked up an old outdated entertainment center. I think it was through Bargain Hunters Unite or Marketplace through Facebook. And it's a pretty chunky piece, like it's really heavy. And B is helping me dig it out from my furniture stash in the shop. It is a quality made piece, you can tell. Pretty sure the owner had told me they got it at an Amish furniture store. So it's definitely well made, but just a bit outdated. So the first thing to do with this piece, of course, is to just clean it up a bit. And normally I would just take my crud cutter and, you know, degloss it and clean it at the same time. But I feel this piece looks pretty bad with some mold involved. So I think I'll just fix some water and soap and just give it a good cleaning before applying my crud cutter. I'm applying the crud cutter. Uh, this is a deglossing agent. It's not a strong smelling chemical or anything. It's more like a soap, uh, but I always think it does a good job of kind of prepping your surface for paint. This avoids sanding, although some surfaces are so glossy and shiny, uh, you almost have to sand them just to dull them up a bit. But I think for this one, I'm okay with just using the crud cutter. As you can see, we have a beautiful foggy morning. Probably not the wisest to spray paint on a morning like this, being that it's kind of damp out here, but the sun is out and I think it's gonna dry nicely. Gonna give it a shot. I'm kind of on a time limit. I really wanted to do it this forenoon, so we'll see how it goes. I've talked about this before, how I'm really blessed to have an awesome air system that my dad had set up for me years ago. There's an air compressor up in the white shop and that one keeps air in the tank, which is also in the white shop. We do have air access down here in the brown shop, but presently there's a leak in the line, so we just have that shut off, and that's why I'm running my hose down the bank from the white shop. Got a few things happening here that aren't so good. First of all, this edge here, you can tell the paint isn't really staying put or the wood isn't letting it be absorbed. There's some spots. But if that ever happens, don't despair. I normally just let it dry and sometimes if I just lightly sand over it and then apply another coat, um, it kind of finishes it off that way. I'm going to go ahead and test this drawer front first here. As you can see, there's some spots on here, and I'm not sure is it due to the fact that it was kind of damp this morning when I started painting, or is it just simply some of these stained uh, surfaces will do this, just have a weird effect and won't 
absorb the paint. In this case, I'm using a very fine grit sanding block, sanding it down lightly, and then giving it a second coat. Right away, I can pretty much tell this will work, you know, sanding it down and then just applying a second coat. I'm going to be working on the base part of this piece first, and at this point my plan is to turn it into a buffet. I know you're probably thinking it's way too low for a buffet, but I plan to add some legs onto it. And initially when I stood in the shop the other day eyeing this piece thinking, what do I want to do with it? I thought I could add legs, you know, to make it higher and turn it into a buffet of sorts. I thought I'd just go buy some turned legs. I know they're rather pricey, but I thought it would probably be worth it for this piece. And then, like a miracle almost, my eyes fell onto this old headboard and footboard that I've had for a couple of years here in the shop and just haven't used it so far. Now, of course, I'm so happy I hung onto it. Wouldn't these posts make pretty legs for a buffet? I'm going to go ahead and cut them down to the right size. I tried to get my height maybe around 36 inches total. I'm going to take them up to the shop and cut them down to size and kind of hold them up against the buffet, see how they look. So here I am the next morning and I'm ready to put my legs on this piece and as you can see I have some wood that I need to be rid of because I want my legs to be up against this piece of wood and there's screws in here I'm gonna go ahead and remove those and see if it's still you know glued or I may have to actually notch it out so that I can fit my legs up snug against this bottom part and the front piece John kindly cut those notches out for me. Um, it was, of course, easier for him to reach, and he's so much better with things like this than what I am. is one of the most handy tools to have in the shop, uh, the Craig Jig. I have a link down below in the description box. But it's a tool used to make pocket holes, making it so much easier to fasten the wood. After holding this piece up to the buffet, I thought it'll look so much better to cut it straight, get rid of that little arch or that curve that's in there. I had to debate out what kind of top I want to use for this piece. Initially I thought, oh, old barn wood would look so pretty. But being that this video is geared towards, you know, giving people ideas of what they could do with an outdated entertainment center, I want to try to use as many parts of the piece that I can. I mean, already I've kind of cheated with the legs, you know, using bed posts. So I want to definitely stick with just using the top of the entertainment center as my buffet top. 
I really should have done that to begin with, just taken it off and, you know, put it on the buffet and painted it along with everything else. But being that I wasn't quite sure what I'd do, and also sometimes it's easier to spray paint if the top is off. Well, it is actually easier to spray paint a piece if the top is off to get into all of those corners. So this way will work too. I'll just need to, you know, paint it separately. Here I'm just removing it. I'm going to use some crud cutter after I just dull the surface up a bit with sandpaper. For a surface like this that gets used more than you know your sides and front wood, it's always a good idea to actually sand it down a bit just to dull things up and then also use the crud cutter uh, to clean it and just degloss it as much as you can. I ended up not getting a video of me putting the top or that trim on the buffet, but you probably kind of get the drift. You know, basically I just put pocket holes um, in the top using, you know, the Craig jig, uh, fastened that, and then for the trim, I pinned it or nailed it um, in place and then was also able to fasten it with the original screws. So as you can see, after taking the rest of the entertainment center apart, these are the pieces I ended up with. And I think there's too many decent pieces in here to not make another little cabinet of sorts. There's a few things I could do with them, but I think for now I'm going to go ahead and make just a small kind of apothecary type cabinet. I'm going to use this longest piece, which was actually the bottom part of the entertainment center, um, cut it down to the right size for my width of the cabinet. I could go with the raised panel sections of the cabinet, but I feel like they're almost too deep for what I want for this. My table saw is up in the other shop, so I'll go ahead and carry all of my pieces up there and then cut them down to the right size. We have another beautiful November day, and I think I'll work on the outside since it's so nice. Plus, it'll save me on creating a lot of dust on the inside. I guess since I need my saw to be on a level place, I'll just keep it on the cement, but it's almost like I'm outside with having the door open. I know this probably looks all confusing, but what I did is make a face frame for my door. I plan to use this glass door for the front of the cabinet, and I needed to create a face frame to kind of frame that in. So I cut some of the original face frame down to the right size, and here I'm putting it together. I know it seems weird to be working on the floor, but to me sometimes that's just the spot that is the most level and I don't really have anything in my way, like I have all kinds of room if I do this, not the most comfortable on the knees, but um, it won't take me long to put it together. I decided to go ahead and sand all of my pieces separately before putting them together. I found out it's just easier that way for me. Now my next step will be putting the sides on here. I'll probably just use my air nailer to do this. I can always, you know, putty the holes since I'm painting this piece anyway. Mm -hmm. 
So now what I have here is just kind of the shell of my piece. And I'm going to go ahead and paint it before I add the back and the shelves. And I'll probably use these pieces here. I have a couple of these down in the shop. Um, use those for two more shelves in here. It's just so much easier if you paint a piece of furniture like this to do it before uh, you know, putting the back in and even the top. That way you don't have all that paint flying uh, back at you as you're doing it. As I was cutting my pieces that I need for this cabinet, like the shelves and the backing, I thought, of course, you know, I need a top for it. And of all things, I did not have one section left over from my entertainment center that's going to work for the top. I wanted something that doesn't have a raised panel, you know, just one of the uh, pieces of wood that is just smooth and even. And of course, by a few inches, they are too small, so I have to go with something else. I did debate to cut my cabinet down to make it less deep, take it on the table saw and just cut the sides and the bottom, but then I'd need to cut all of my shelves smaller too, and I thought, I have it together, I'm just going to leave it this way, and I think if I would have been a little smarter and thought my way through before just cutting all these pieces, I could have made something work. But being that I didn't, I'll have to just use something else. I did end up finding a tabletop. You may remember this from a previous video. Um, I had used the base of a table for uh, one of the cottages, actually. And this top was just lying around here, not in use. And I think it's going to work. So basically, I'm just going over all of the pieces, prepping them to be painted. Once again, using my crud cutter. I plan to paint the inside of this piece white, and then the outside another color. So I'll go ahead and paint the inside first. before painting here I'll kind of show you what I have I mean basically it's pretty simple just two sides and then a face frame a top you know some shelves and then a bottom of course you know all put together um, it's definitely nothing fancy as you can see I mean it's not it's far from perfect my plan is to paint the top and the sides kind of from this angle and try not to get any paint on my white part and then I'll probably take it inside and brush the rest of it and of course the door here I can spray paint. I'm using a green color that I don't even have a name for. It's just some old green paint that I had probably for years in my paint cabinet. And I just mixed some white in with it to get it a little bit lighter. Um, it's just a pretty kind of old fashioned color of green. I decided I wanted a decal for the door, so here I'm just measuring the space. 
I'm just gonna simply put the word apothecary on here. And with the vinyl I'm using, it's totally removable. If someone wouldn't want that word on there, they could always remove it. Use my Silhouette Cameo to cut it out. Moving back to the buffet, I still had the little doors to hang and I decided to go with using the same hardware that was on the piece but painting it. Here I'm just using a matte or a flat black paint. Pieces like this I like to distress the edges. That way if some paint would happen to chip off over the years it will look natural uh, being that the edges are already kind of chippy. Just using a fine grit sandpaper to do this. Here I'm cutting some contact paper to line the drawers with. This is really easy to use. It has lines on the back for easy cutting, and then you just peel the backing off uh, self-adhesive. As I'm pulling this drawer out, I see I missed spray painting the one side, so I'll probably just use a brush and paint that white too. say I'm kind of impressed with how these pieces turned out. Uh, no, they're far from perfect, but I would totally have them in my own home. In fact, I wish I had room for them, but I'll probably end up selling them. Uh, this one might end up in the antique mall. I have a, a booth that I share with another girl in the antique mall in Walnut Creek. I might end up putting it up there. And then this piece is pretty big and heavy, so I don't think I'll put it in my booth. I may just end up selling it privately. The best thing about all of this is the fact that you can take an outdated piece of furniture that you don't want anymore, have no use for, create two new pieces that you can enjoy in your home and have barely spent anything. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that if you ask me. If you like some of the labels you saw on the bottles in this cabinet, I do have some similar ones on the Etsy shop available as a digital download. And I'll leave that link down below in the description box. As always, I hope your day is going great. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.